Make some noise for the one and only Jay Hartley! Are you just going to tell us more about how to start a track? And uh, if you have any questions, just raise your hand and I will try to get to you as soon as possible. Okay, take it away, man. Yes, uh, well, I'm going to explain to you how, uh, how you can start a track. Uh, mostly how I start my tracks. And um, I just want to say it's not the way to start a track. Um, but it's, it's how I do it, and maybe it can figure you creatively to, uh, to start something cool. Um, I work in a studio. Um, unfortunately, I work on PCs, so this is um, uh, this is my MacBook where I don't have all the plugins, so I won't be able to go into all my projects. But I'm, uh, well, we're going to start a track, so maybe I can start a track. Um, and what I think is very important in starting a track uh, is melody and chords um, and um, I think it's very important to realize that um, um, music theory and the way chords are built and the way melodies are built on top of chords are very important for a good melody and thus for a good track it's the basic of all music from classical music to what, what I made to what um, even like in techno there's a key in the song the key the bass note that this this, has. this is the key and that's where you build your uh, melody around. Um, and I'm gonna try to explain it basically. Uh, I don't have that much time with an hour, so I, I'm gonna try to start something new as well. It's, yeah, I don't know how far we get, but we'll see. Um, so um, what I do if I want to start some chords, I take uh, like a basic sounding uh, side of the sound on uh, your list of not on the Sound, it's a very basic uh, synth. Um, so, what is a chord? I'm going to try to start very basic because I don't know um, how far it one is. Um, maybe you can raise your hand if you are a producer. <laughs> and uh, if you release the track on a label uh, already, can you raise your hand? Okay, so. Well, the goal is next year you come back and you all have some release, so that would be, uh, would be amazing. Um, so yeah, what is a chord and how did I learn it? Um, I do have a little bit of theoretical background, but I try to... Um, I always explain that I also hear it in my head. Um, so like I don't have to think about what notes I play, but there are certain rules when it comes to, uh, to notes. If you want to build a chord, it's three notes. Uh, let's take the G as a bass note, and um, let's build a chord. This is one note, and now I have three notes. And the way I place them is in a G major chord, um, and um, why is it major? I don't know, but I always say it sounds happy. And if you want to build this chord in a minor chord, just take that middle note down. Um, and it sounds sad. That's how you can, like minor chord sounds sad, that's how like, you can like start with it. Um, so it's three notes, it's a very basic chord, and um, what you want in a song is um, you want multiple chords progressing after another and get a chord progression and that makes um, it can be the basis you can start with the melody as well. But what I like to do is build chords and build a melody on top. So I'm going to try to make a very basic um, chord progression from from this uh, this one chord. And well, I can show you better. I think that the bass note is that is the base of every chord. It's the foundation of every chord. And if I make a melody with that, I can build a chord around the bass. So let's do that. Now that's my chord progression. So that's very exciting. Um, what if I make them all minor chords? Let's see. 
it's always the, the same um, distances between the, the notes in this piano roll. Um, so it's two notes in between, and then three notes in between, you have the basic minor chord. Um, so let's try how that sounds. That doesn't sound too good, um, so maybe I can change some of the chords to major. It's, uh, some notes are phasing a little bit while it sounds a bit weird on these speakers, but we're good, we're good. Um, so, that's my basic chord progression, like this, you can start a track from this. Um, and, um, well, that's a basic chord, uh, but you can add notes to your chords as well. To your chord structure, you can make different rhythms with the chords and make them more interesting. And I thought it would be fun to show you how I did that in my track uh, Electric Elephants. So I'm going to open uh, the MIDI file I have for Electric Elephants. Um, the basic chords from Electric Elephants. And I know the resolution is not optimal, but here are just the bass note. And I can try to move that up so you can see them all together. Well, I'm going to clash a bit. Well, I'm going to play them. by the rules that I just explained. So that would be electric elephants, very basic. But I think that's a bit boring, and I think I want to make it more interesting. So uh, what I do is, I'm going to uh, take the same preset and in a different one, so just that note. I added some notes that wouldn't be, um, you wouldn't expect there in the first place. Um, so note. And I have those channels turned on in Fruity Loops, which is a function where you can see what the other instrument is playing. Um, so you can see the gray notes now are the, are the, the, the basic notes. And um, like here you can already see, hey, there's less room between them. Um, and that's, um, you can play around with that, but you gotta realize it's all based on music theory. Uh, and I happen to hear uh, I hear hey, that I can use that and I cannot use that note. Hard to explain how I know it, I just know. But the cool thing is, and even if you don't hear it, there's music theory to back it up. So you can always go back into theory books or um, find out about, hey, what key is this? It's a G minor, in this case it's an F sharp minor. Um, what, what notes can I play in this melody? And it, it always works. So you can play around with that and get um, more knowledge about how to play the chords. So sounds uh, weird, but if I add it to this, uh, so I turn on the first chord as well.
don't have my mouse today, which is only able to the mouse when I go out in the way for And also, by all means, you don't have to make the chords more complicated or different. You can use basic chords and build a massive hit, but I just really like uh, hits that have like different chords, and uh, I'm going to show you an example of that after this. So the last one we need like that, and then we have something, um, or we can maybe build a melody on that, so. Um, but I want to show you, like, uh, because it's a cool example, um, Kelvin Harris slide, uh, if I take the very basic chords of that, without the bass note, so the bass note you would think here is starts with an A, and then it goes to a B, like if we use the first rules of the basic chords, um, and then it goes to a A again, and it sounds really boring. Special. Um, but what Calvin Harris does a lot, he, he switches around the bass note as well, which you can do, um, but you have to know what sounds with them. It's all based on music theory again, but it's, it's, it's a little bit more complicated. So, starting with the A, and then we go to the G sharp for the bass note, which you wouldn't do that if you only use the basic basic chord rule, but let's try out try how it sounds. And after that, we go to uh, C sharp. Um, and you wouldn't necessarily expect that as a bass note there, but then it's a bit slower, slide, of course. It's like 110, something like that. And it changes a bit lower, so you lose a bit more actual bass. different and the top chords are still the same. Um, I think he switches to this one. Um, so you change the whole chord by you just uh, changing the bass note. So I could get into that because um, I think that's that's really cool and I think uh, that's what makes Calvin Harris' tracks stand out because it seems very simple and people always say like, oh, it's just simple, it's just piano, and it's just some chords and uh, drums, but it's, this is what makes his tracks special, I think, and uh, you can take a track to the next level. Uh, of course, he uses a piano um, and he actually played it or let someone play it. I have this ugly sound. So sound is actually, um, actually the next part I want to talk about because you need nice sounds. You want uh, sounds that sound like you. You want to create a signature sound. Maybe you want to um, find out maybe uh, some plugin that you like. And I think a uh, mistake is made when people. Um, <laughs> They think that a sound is like a certain synth or a certain sample is their sound. But what's important to know is that um, um, uh, someone's sound is not based on certain instruments, but it's based on the instruments that person likes. If I like a certain synth, if I choose a certain organ, that will be part of my sound. I have uh, a couple releases and you can hear it's me, but uh, they all sound very different. So let's, um, I'm just gonna try to play with the sound and maybe you can build a melody uh, with, on these chords. And um, it's a new plugin. And the resolution is, um, it's not a new plugin, but uh, like, I recently um, started working with this one on this, but it's pretty cool for cool sounding sounds. So you can, um, let's change the chords, let's uh, use another sound. So, um, 
I'm going to try to search for like an organ, something that maybe sounds cool. And change the chords into that. Let's copy that into the bass synth. 
9 ZPM and my trip is 1 to 28. So um, in every DAW, uh, every word we work with, there's a different function for this to change the length and the rhythm, the tempo of the sample. Here you can use, if you have the sample, right click time and you can uh, type, uh, I'm not the first name, being for myself, auto detect and um, type in BPM and then it's 100, so type in the original BPM and then it switches to uh, the, the BPM I'm using in the project, like the 128 here. Well, it sounds uh, not right, but then... So you gotta know again what uh, what pitch your track is in. In this case, you know it's G. This sample is A, uh, so I'm, this sample is cool because it says in which key it is. If you don't know it, you gotta hear it, or you use piano and you find a note that is um, uh, the same as the sample, and then you can kind of find it out. So you change the pitch. Uh, Two notes, so it's a B. Two half notes. Start 
of the grade, and then you can introduce the parts differently. Uh, so, for instance, you can just start with this, just to give you an idea. <laughs> Hey, I have that old project, that's why I say keep the old project 
because we're going to find something in the melody or sound. And I was like, okay, um, but the new project is in a different key, and there's the musical part as well. So I'm going to change it to the new key, and for those of you uh, who don't know bootcamp, I'm going to show the break. that I 
uh, it's the same lead set as that earlier version, but it's um, the attack uh, I changed it from, I think it's somewhere on YouTube, by uh, some masterclass I did somewhere else, but I just changed one thing in the lead set and it became the uh, So, I think, yeah, that's important. Keep pushing and keep, you will want to make sure that that track is the best version of that track it can be, but it will never be perfect. Um, I have one of the first versions of Wizard with Mark and Garrix um, because we, were, we wanted to make like a follow up of um, uh, Arrow 404. Um, I don't know if it's another one, but if you know that one, it will sound familiar. Just as a project, and then uh, uh, Martin 
was like, oh, okay, that's a bit too childish, and he gave me that laptop, I'm gonna change it, and um, yeah, it's, it's a more mature track, I think it's uh, one of my favorite tracks to play on my sets as well. Um, Need It is pretty cool, if you know my track, Need It. This
I'm just going to take these scores, uh, make it copy to the uh, um, Yes, this right here. Like, if I want to, um, there's a, the way I did it was uh, included that you can uh, automate. It's actually very simple. You can automate the VPN. Um, create like right click on the VPN, create automation clip. And then it set it one for the so you copy that. Um, copy the value and put like NPN, right around the end, but it needs to be one for the A, so I don't know. And then you just drag this one down, this automation clip, which like controls that uh, timeline. Uh, and I did it in a separate project, so I was, um, I didn't, uh, that's all my original right? Made that. So, like this here, DPM. And that's how I started to start the class. And what I did was, like, um, like if I select this, and I would export as WAV file, uh, then you launch that part, and then I use that in the, in the, like the original project. So that was just a WAV file. Great question. Uh, any more questions from the audience? Or oh, shit. Or was everything clear? Because I didn't understand the shit about it. But no. no, it was already... Um, do you have any, any, because uh, it's about how to start a, a track, um, do, do you have any tips for the producers like, okay, you need to have an idea when you start, or can you also start like empty? I, I prefer to start empty, uh, I think that's probably creatively the most fun way to do it, um, and then just mess around and you find something, hey, this is cool, and then you think, okay, what should it be? But you can also, like, hey, I want to make a track that's future house or um, techno and then you can do that also I think it's just more fun uh, to start the other way around and I feel like it uh, stimulates creativity a bit more so you do weird stuff you never thought it would work and it, it can be the basis of a new, uh, new song and you were talking about the, the music rules yeah. Uh, what, what's a good way for a producer to, to find out those rules? Is it like you have to go to, to school or is, uh, can you find it somewhere? Or? You, YouTube probably has videos, okay. uh, there's books. Uh, my tour manager Gary has this, um, he also produces, he has this, um, I don't know how this thing on his phone and it's like a, an image and it shows like, hey, this key, this key knows and uh, yeah, the circle of pits. Ooh, that sounds crazy. And like he has it on his phone, so oh, he's in the studio and he's like, yeah, I don't know if there's an idea, but... I, I know, I, it's off, but it's all right. And so, um, I, I know that uh, a lot of DJs even use that in their sets. Yeah. So if you have a build-up yeah. in your set on the right keys, yeah. it doesn't break the perfect set. Yeah. All right, great. Any questions? Because we're almost wrapping it up. Oh, that's right. oh, that's the young producer guy. What is that? Go to school, boy. I have a question. How do you make the drops that sounds big and not like little and it's... <laughs> um, yeah, it's, um, it's important to choose the sounds correctly. Um, make sure that you choose the right kick, make sure you use the right bass. And this is this is very hard to explain because there's not like a now like that says right now it sounds good. But it's important to just have all the elements work together. So if you have a clap um, that's on the drop and it's there's too much bass in the clap, like low keys, then it, it interferes with the kick. So you need to EQ the clap and it needs to sound nice. And if you do it with the bass and it's, it's just like um, keep 
uh, keep polishing certain elements or changing stuff until it sounds bigger. And there's a lot of um, um, ways with rhythm you can sound, make tracks sound more in interesting and more uh, grooving. And it's, 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 it's a matter of, um, yeah, you feel it as you go. And that's why you can't really explain it, but yeah, I hope that it. And, and of course, that the spinning plays uh, plug in, uh, makes it easy, yeah. right? Uh, commercial, commercial. Uh, any more questions for the audience? That guy filmed the whole <laughs> cool. on his phone. Is your phone already full or not? Yeah, almost. Almost. Hey, Jay. Yeah. Uh, you told about the trick uh, when you uh, render uh, the animation. Yeah. But when I do it, like yeah, and put it back in the project, it don't uh, match with the grid, so it it really fucks with the side chain in the project. If you understand? Yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. Uh, I think you it's got important. Like if I would, um, if I want this part was selected now to speed up, then uh, it well, samples are different because samples will stretch out, so that's difficult with samples like this, like you see now they are. Well, then that's really good now again, but if I taste the... Um, okay. Samples are difficult, um, so, but for like instruments it's easier. I don't know if you're using samples or like synths. Oh, yeah, yeah, the MIDI, right? Just the MIDI, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if I, what I would do, if in this case, like, what if I want four bars of um, speeding up, and then four bars, what you can do, the um, what you can do is just like you see the sample change now, but that's another one. Um, what you can do is just like okay, I need four bars to speed up. Um, well, but then you have those four bars, and you know where where's the end exactly. What I would do is just make something behind it, like this, for example. Um, and it, it doesn't need, need to be anything. But what I can do is like I take um, a clap or something uh, oh, it, so. where are the claps? And a little bit later, I make sure that's right on the grid. And then when it speeds up. And because we selected this, uh, you can bounce this, and the clap will be in the exact grid. And then in your project, the wave file, you can make sure the clap is on the grid of that project. Um, yeah, that's that's one way how you can do it, I guess. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. Okay, I think we have time for one last question. That's going to be the last one. Um, you can also see Jay play tonight here in the club there for spinning sessions. What's that you playing? Mm -hmm. Late. Oh, okay. Um, so check it out. There are a few tickets left for the door tonight. Um, do you have your own party at any as well, right? No. No? Not this year. Oh, my okay. boy. Not too good. Hey, Jay, how are you? How are you, man? Good, good, good. So, not really good days, but I was wondering when I'm going to explain what it is, because I think we're going to have a million hits on YouTube. Sorry, what the. I was like, when are you going to explain spotless? I, You're trapped. Spotless? Yeah, because you're going to meet YouTube. Yeah. I used it, yeah, yeah. Um, I think everyone's ready for that. Uh, yeah, like some of you know, I do spin tracks on my YouTube channel. Um, and I was asking uh, as well, like, for, uh, where I explain spotless. But I want to do this together with uh, Martin Garrix, uh, because then we have to explain who did what. And it will be a cool episode, but we are both very uh, busy on our schedule. Of course, Martin is uh, crazy busy, and um, I hope we find some time. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try, but it's, it's very busy, but uh, there will be probably one of the episodes. Of, uh, Martin and me explain spotless, it will be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. I think so too. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have a warm applause for the one and only day, hard way! What a great session that was, it's amazing how you pull it off. Um, if you want to have, I don't know if you have time for a quick talk or 
Uh, please do it on the left side, on the other side of that bench, if you want to meet up with Jay for a few minutes. Um, in a few minutes, we are going to the next session, and it's going to be a high professionals present the fire controller for FLC.